Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Pastor Carol. And Pastor Dave. From Harvest Christian Ministries International in Davenport, Florida. Um, let's open with a word of prayer. Dave. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to pray for the people of God. We pray for those that are listening in every household. We pronounce the blessing over their lives, that they are Amen. blessed, that yes. they are healed, yes. that they are whole. And we pray that the peace of God abides in their home. Now open our eyes that we may see, open yes. our ears that we may hear. Father, give us a heart to understand mm. the word of the living God. Uh, bless the words of our mouth, that it may be a blessing to the hearer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Uh, here of late, we've been teaching on raising our level of expectation and in this particular era of being able to hear from God. So just a, a slight review um, where we've launched from was from the scripture of 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. And what we've talked about before already is about having confidence, um, faith. And today we'll talk about relationship and um, also that of Permission. Uh, permission. We actually talked we, a little bit about relationship last week. Right. So it's just basically a, a quick review. <clears throat> um, here in this year, uh, 2021, uh, many of us have already had some early challenges. Um, and we, we just need to be able to hear from God in particular areas of our lives. And so what we need to do is just seek out the scripture, you know, stand on the word of God. Amen. Um, but what we've said in the past already in the last couple of weeks is that we want to be able to hear from God. We are raising our level of expectation. Amen. <clears throat> it's so vitally important for us to be able to, um, uh, as the years go on, that we, we don't want to remain stagnant. We want to keep going to a different level. And so um, we've talked about in the past here that you have a right as a child of God to be able to hear from God, that every child has a right to be able to hear from, from their daddy. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> First John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Um, I'm here to tell you this morning, child of God, or this afternoon, that God is not hard of hearing. God hears every cry. He hears every prayer that we pray. Now, the question is whether or not that prayer gets answered. It gets answered if it's according to his will. Uh, we gave the example last week about the kid who wanted to who wanted a Ferrari mm -hmm. or a BMW or whatever it was, and he's only four years old. Right. And you as a parent wouldn't dare give that child that, right? Because you know what's best for them. So sometimes, and we even uh, declared last week that sometimes your manifestation is not happening is because the timing is not right. Well, Amen? not only is God always hearing, but God is always speaking. Amen. God is always speaking right. to us about one thing or another. He's, there's always a level of... I want to say protection mm -hmm. or guidance or there's always a pile of information that's being given to us. We just have to be willing and open to receive it. Amen. And so it's clearing out the cobwebs, like you said last week about not um, being so consumed mm -hmm. about the things of the world that you are not focused on God, but you're focused on all this other stuff. Right. And whereas God is the author and the finisher of all things. Mm -hmm. And so raising our level of expectation of being able to hear from God, <clears throat> again, we said it's our uh, first areas of that, of our confidence, our faith, our relationship, and permission. So we want to raise our level of expectation of being able to hear from God. So, and, and even with confidence, when uh, I'm thinking about a good friend of mine who <clears throat> just recently just gone through something that was, that was pretty tough, pretty hard, and... You know, didn't his faith may be even wavering a little bit. And he was believing God that, that the situation that he was going through, that God would bring him through it. And God did. God mm -hmm. delivered. And I prayed with him. And he, you know, it wasn't because of what I prayed. I believe that it was the will of God. <clears throat> Again, this was the confidence that I had, that I had in God, that when I pray according to his will, that he answered. But what happened is I explained to him, I said, what has happened now now that God has brought you through this thing, you've now come up to a different level. Right. You're now on another faith level because if God delivered you back then, mm -hmm. now you have what we talked about, our file cabinet. You now have, have something that you can go to say, if God Amen. delivered me Amen. out of that situation, surely God can deliver me out of this situation, but he's going to bring you to another level of faith. So that's our confidence. Again, our confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And again, and God is not hard of hearing. And I think that's where it lines up where people honestly have to say that you know 
you know who God is to you. Oh, and that's right. Like you got to know. You can't attack this thing haphazardly. Like you don't. You know. You wishy washy. You can't be fencing it. You've got to know who God is. That's right. What we say, know when you know her. Know when you know her. All right. So confidence was the first level. The second level, or the second second area, is that of our faith. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago as well. Is that Romans chapter ten, mm -hmm. uh, very familiar passage of scripture. Romans chapter ten, verse seventeen. So then faith cometh by hearing. <coughs> And hearing by the word of God that we can raise our level of expectation of being able to hear from God when we spend quality time with God and his word. Amen. But doesn't, that, doesn't that word, uh, doesn't that scripture allow us to know that you're not just hearing it one time? Hmm. You're That's not right. just listening to something on Sundays and you don't hear it again till next Sunday. No, no, right. no. It's hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's good. So it's a constant a constant thing of being in God's presence mm -hmm. to hear what he actually is saying to us. And we, we've talked about this for a minute about that. God is relational. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, he's not religional. Yeah. We made up that word. He's not <laughs> religional, but he's relational that, that God Amen. desires to have a relationship. I had someone ask me a little while back. It says, uh, pastor day, what, what's your prayer life? Like, I mean, how many hours a, a day do you pray? And I looked, I was kind of quizzical about it. And I said, no, I don't, I don't spend hours in prayer. I, I have an ongoing attitude of prayer that throughout, like all the, the time. throughout the day, I'm constantly talking with God. Now, right. you know, of course you, you have your time when you, you kneel down or, or whatever your posture is to get serious or to become more, more focused mm -hmm. in your, your prayer time with God. But I have an ongoing um, conversation with God throughout the day, you know, praying and and hymns and songs and spiritual songs and spiritual hymns as the Bible talks about. All right. But hearing and listening, the, the definition of the word hearing is, is, the, is a Greek word for it. A-K-R-O-A-S-I. I don't profess to know Greek, but it's, I found it interesting that the Greek word, uh, akroasi, it means inquest. It means inquisition. It means to examine, to perceive. And so I look at it this way. So we can put, we can say this, that so then faith cometh by inquisition. <laughs> oh, that's good. That faith cometh by our ability to examine the word of God. Mm. So it, it's about line upon line and precept upon precept, as the Bible puts it. And so we have to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Amen. So in our level of faith, raising our level of expectation of being able to hear from God, we now have to operate in, 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 in this faith of God. Or the word of God by hearing. I I, I um I use this test um, many times um, in the mornings when I start my day. I listen to the word of God, and so what happened is um, I put it on repeat so I can listen to it over and over again. And so my test for me is how long can I listen to it, or can I get through an entire passage of scripture or chapter without being dis disturbed, right, or being distracted. You know, so for me, that lets me know whether or not my attention is really on God or not. Now, sometimes God will begin to speak to my heart and speak to my mind regarding the scripture. So sometimes it's not being as distracted. Right. But you, you think about the things that go on in the morning. You, you think about the, the, the coffee you're about to go make or breakfast that you need to go make or you're preparing for work. And it's so easy to come, become distracted. Yes. So the first thing was our um, our confidence in God. The second thing was our faith in God. And then uh, last week we talked about relationship. Again, we say that God is relational, that he's not religional. And that was in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And the scripture says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, Then the man and his wife heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the breeze of the day. And they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called out to the man, Where are you? I heard your voice in the garden, he replied, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And, and notice again, we talked about this last week, about how both of them, both the man and the woman, mm -hmm. knew the voice of God, heard the voice of God. And again, we, like we said last week, is that as, as a man, as the head of the house, I need to be able to hear from God. But it's also vitally important that the woman of God, the, the wife, also hears from God because it causes a balance. Amen. And so we are increasing our level of expectation of being able to hear from God that we don't want to become so occupied or hide amongst our stuff. 
Right. We, we talked about that as well last night. So don't hide in your in, in your house or your, your pleasure zone or the things that God has blessed you with. No, have an ear to hear. Amen. Again, God is relational and not religional. Also, we said that God is directional. Notice when God said, Adam, where art thou? God was directing. He was pointing him back towards himself. I like what Jesus said. Jesus says, and if I be lifted up, he says, I will draw all men unto me. God is always pointing us towards the sun. Amen. <clears throat> so, um, so if you are a child of God and if you're watching us here today and you don't know what your status is, you might be in a backslidden state. Or you might don't even uh, uh, attend church anymore or don't worship anymore or don't spend time with God anymore. God is calling you. And look at this. It, it doesn't matter the time of the day. When God came to them, he came in the cool of the day. God wasn't hot headed. All right. But God, because now he said we can boldly come before the throne of grace that I like how the Bible says that it's got it. It, it satisfied God. Yeah. It satisfied yeah. God to yeah. bruise his son. So God, again, is no longer mm -hmm. angry at us, mad at us, waiting for us to mess up. So, no. So Jesus has taken all of the Amen. penalty, all of the pain, all oh, of the suffering. Good. He's taken all of that. And so that you don't have. So we don't have. So we to. don't have. We don't have to endure the wrath of God that it pleased God to bruise his son, Jesus. But remember now that even in your fallen state, if that's where you are, God is still talking. And, and you know that. Someone that's listening right now, you know that, that God is still talking to you and you refuse to answer. Listen, child of God, answer the call. God is calling you. God, God, look, he said, the scripture says that God is not slack concerning mm. his promises as some men count slackness. Look how long God's been waiting for you. Hallelujah. I, I, it blesses my heart to know that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, mm. that God waited long Hallelujah. enough. Hallelujah. Waited long enough that I might become saved, Hallelujah. that save me the fool. Glory to God that I am now yes, saved. Amen. Yes. So let's talk about the relationship aspect of it. So we talked about confidence. We talked about the, the faith aspect of it. Now in the relationship aspect of it. Uh, turn your Bibles to John uh, chapter 1. I love, love, love this scripture. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, talking about Jesus, but as many as received him to them, gave he power to become sons of of God, even to them that believe on his name. So what did he do? He gave them power. He gave those who, who will come to him to believe on it. He gave them power to believe. Amen. The power to believe on his name. Verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Again, we say God Hallelujah. is relational. He gives power to those who become his family. Hallelujah. Listen, say this with me. I am, I am a child of God. A child of God. I believe, I believe on his name. On his name. I am born. I am born not of blood. Not of blood. Nor the will of the flesh. Nor the will of the flesh. Nor the will of man. Nor the will of man. But I'm born of God. But I'm born of Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Now you, these are things you is, have to make a decision to to be about. Mm -hmm. These are not things that's just gonna have hazardly happen. Is this, this elementary? Is this elementary? Oh, it's elementary. Oh, this, right. is, this is elementary. Yes, it is. No, this is above, above collegiate. I'm here to tell you that it, it's, no, this is so gotta, powerful you, you, that God, look, God. It's powerful, but you've got to be, sometimes you've got to plainly be taught. The word mm. says, make it plain. I hear you. Don't go above my head. Make it plain. Mm. Show me and tell me oh, what so I need to do. Oh, so this is elementary then. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I mean, you know what? There are no ho hoops to, jo uh, to jump through. God no, has made the really plan aren't. of salvation so simple for simple. us. Amen. We make it difficult. Man. We make it difficult mm. because we be, we always are trying to find out how to do something without doing it the right way. Mm. Always do, looking for a shortcut. Looking for a shortcut. Hmm. So notice that we're born of the spirit, not of the flesh. So therefore we must be led by the spirit yes. and not by our flesh. Listen, child of God, understand something. You, you, you. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. You are a spirit that has a soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotion that resides in a physical body. You are a trichotomite being. You are a three-part man or woman, if you will. So we want to just change our thinking and want to increase our Hallelujah. level of expectation of being able to receive from God. Now in the last portion of this, which is permission, we, we've covered already, what was the first one? Uh, confidence. Confidence. Faith, faith, relationship, relationship and now permission. is permission. 
turn your Bibles to me, uh, with me to um, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, and we're going to begin at verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down and the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived, hmm. glory to God, that the Lord had Hallelujah. called the child. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he call thee that thou shalt say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place and the Lord came and stood and called at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And I, I know you're listening, whatever your name is, <laughs> David, David, whatever your name is. So he called his name Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak for, for thy, thy servant, servant hear it. Oh, my God, that just blesses me so that much. Blesses me too. Hallelujah. This is a what Samuel did in this era of raising that level of expectation of being able to hear from God is he gave him permission. He says, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth." And did you notice something uh, in the scripture that the voice of God um, it, to 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 ah. Samuel, it sounded like Eli. Now, Eli was a priest. Remember, Eli was a priest and he had his sons. But Eli was really um, on his, outs his with God. Sons. All right. Because Eli, he failed to discipline his sons. Right. Eli was a priest, but his sons were doing some wacky stuff. Amen. And God was was not happy with the priest Eli because he did not discipline his sons. But notice, remember Samuel, Samuel. He was the first prophet, or actually Moses was the first prophet, but Samuel was the prophet whom God called because the, the voice of God was quiet during that time. Because of the sins that were going on in Israel and the sins of Eli and his family, that God was silent. So there was no voice, there was no ear, there was no one. But remember Hannah, she mm. promised to give God back her son. If, she would, if God would bless her with a son, she promised. I'll give them back to you. And I'm here to tell you, child of God, that if you have children, give them back to God. Amen. And so Hannah, you she... You ain't got to go drop them off the church. <laughs> Please. She, she gave her son back to God by yeah. giving him to Eli. And so Samuel was in a household of faith. You see that? He was in a household of faith. So he heard the word of God being taught, mm -hmm. right? Even though the priests were a little wacky, but the voice of God now, and being wait, able to hear wait, God wait. directly. N not necessarily the priest. Eli wasn't the wacky one. It was his, his sons son. that but, were wacky. And the, the scripture hmm. actually tells us that Samuel mimicked Eli, not his sons. Hmm. And you would That's almost good. think he mimicked his sons because they were of the age. Yeah. yeah. So the, the problem with that actually, is that. He, Samuel dressed like, the, like Eli. Mm -hmm. He carried himself like Eli. Hmm. I don't know what was going on with his sons. It but was just crazy. The problem with that though is that Eli, Eli failed to yeah, discipline, discipline right. his sons. But notice something. He spared the rod. E <laughs> <laughs> they became fools. <laughs> notice something that when God called Samuel, mm -hmm. Samuel heard Eli's voice. Which, which, which says to me, Eli was being the man of God he was supposed to be around Samuel. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't being the father he needed to, to be, be to, to his son, son his good. children. That's good. And 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 that's that's almost a weird thing. His sons may have showed out because of the treatment he gave Samuel. Mm -hmm. Who knows? 
Well, they they were they act wickedly. Let's put it that way. Very much so. Now, I I, I don't know about you, right? But there are times when I hear Apostle Tony Brazelton's mm -hmm. voice, my dad, my spiritual dad. That sometimes I hear that that voice of God. That sometimes I hear mm -hmm. His voice. Yep. Who are you listening to? You look at Adam and Eve when they were in the garden. Um, someone told them that they were naked. And God said, who have you been listening to? Mm -hmm. who, are you, who are you talking to? The only voice they should have known is the voice of God. <clears throat> and so out of this, um, it's the association. You know, as a matter of fact, the scripture says in uh, 2 Chronicles 20.20, 20, mm -hmm. uh, believe on the Lord thy God, so shall you be established. Believe on his prophets, so shall you prosper. Understand, child of God, that you're a man and woman of God, that your prosperity is in your mouth. Pray for your pastors. Pray for them. Because you they, must have they a man have, and woman of God. You, that, they they have important. to give an account for you. Amen. Yes. And so this whole thing that we're talking about permission, mm -hmm. about being able to raise our level of expectation. We won't go good. Look, speak, Lord. Yes. That servant heareth. Yes. Speak, Lord. That servant heareth. So if you're watching us today, and you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we pray that something was said here today, yes. right, that will cause your heart to turn towards God. But if you've not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this simple prayer, dear Lord Jesus, dear Lord Jesus, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died, died on the cross, on the cross for my sins, for my sins, past. Past, present, present and, future. and future and that God and that God raised Jesus raised Jesus from the dead from the dead and he's now seated and he is now seated at the right hand of the at father the right hand I confess with father. my mouth I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart and I believe in my heart unto righteousness unto righteousness I'm saved I am glory saved. to God. Hallelujah. My name is written. Hallelujah. Your name is written in the Lamb's book news. of life. That's glory to news. God. Yeah. So we've talked about our confidence. We've talked about our faith. We've talked mm -hmm. about relationship. And we've talked about permission. Listen, give us a visit. Come visit us at hcmi.life. Not at the building. Not at the building. We're not back at the building just yet. But yeah. praise God, we will be uh, as the Lord permits. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We we'll look forward to talking to you soon. The harvest is truly... Mm -hmm. Right. right.